yeah so i got a question um actually it was just a comment on one of the posts i posted my spiritual father and somebody commented and said i honestly thought you were different this is very disappointing that you're connected also to major one <laughs> interesting so let's talk about this um i think one of the greatest mistakes i have found in my work with god is that we are living in a dispensation where we have unspiritual people that are trying to comment on things they don't qualify to comment on the bible says in the in the book of first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 it says a carnal mind cannot receive anything of the spirit because it is foolishness to him you need to understand that the basis under which we receive anything from the lord is on faith and it's very hard to speak faith to a person who operates in the flesh and i also want you to understand that it's very easy for you when you don't know the story behind the person to come and comment from the peripheries of illusions mostly when you ask a person like this one to say what was your encounter with the said prophet they have never met the prophet before all they are basing their judgment on is things they have seen bloggers write okay. and then such a person is trying to argue with me who has got a one-on-one -on -one encounter with the prophet so honestly our perspective will not be the same you are talking from the peripheries of the horizon i am speaking from the encounter i have had with the man of god jesus one time gave a very hard teaching to people he told them if you don't drink my blood and eat my flesh you don't qualify to be my follower and everybody ran away from jesus now you must consider that this is the man who was considered satanic jesus was considered satanic he was considered to be a man that was using the spirit of Beelzebub to cast out devils and perform miracles Beelzebub the literal meaning and interpretation is called Satan so imagine a person that is considered satanic coming to you to say drink my blood and eat my flesh so everybody dispersed from him then the disciples remained and then Jesus turned around and asked the disciples and you also living like the rest of the people and then Peter said something extraordinary he said Lord where else can we go because you have the words of eternal life that is very phenomenal he said you have the words of eternal life Peter did not say you have a reputation of eternal life you have a positive public view of eternal life but he said you have the words the words the words of eternal life the words if peter was following what everybody was saying he could have missed the revelation also the bible says in the book of romans chapter 1 verse 16 it says i am not ashamed of the gospel of our lord jesus christ for it is the power unto salvation to the jews first and also to the greeks paul would have never said he was not ashamed of the gospel if preaching the gospel or having the gospel was not shameful it was because just being on the side of the gospel of jesus christ was shameful and every time sons come to a place where their father is in such a predicament where his reputation has been messed up most sons they run in safety but guess what when most sons want to refute that they are connected to their spiritual father it is not mostly because they don't love the spiritual father it's because they value the acceptance of the masses more than the validation of their spiritual father which is something i don't look forward to i gave up on ministry i stopped everything to do with ministry i was just doing music as a gospel artist it is god who spoke to the prophet that you people insult that that man called me and said god spoke to me that you need to get back into ministry and gave me has given me mentorship 
So I have been a blessing to a few hundreds of people and you can discard all that investment because I'm connected to major one. So I am not a person that will step on the relationship I have with my spiritual father to be accepted by a person. No, no, no. It means you are accepting a wrong person. You accept. If, if I lie to you, I, I stay quiet and I say, you know what? I don't want to come out as I'm, I'm, I'm connected to major one and then you love me. It means you're loving a fake one. I would rather you reject me for the truth, you reject me for who I am, than accept me for something I'm not. I am a proud son of Prophet Shepherd Bushir. And this man has done in my life, even in my walk with Jesus, so much that none of those holy people that you consider holy ever did. They watched me rot in, 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 in my country to the point whereby pastors even stole the name of my ministry because they said I was finished. I had backslidden. I heard preachers preach me on stage, telling, talking about how finished a prophet I was, talking about how I was, my ministry was closed, I had backslidden and gone into the world. That man, what he did in my life makes me look beyond whatever somebody can say. Because to me, he has the words of eternal life. Peter did not say you have the reputation of eternal life. No. The problem we have in the kingdom is that we want to preach good news and not give people the good news. We want to preach about healing and not give people healing. The moment people can see results, it does not matter what somebody is doing they'll go for the results. For me, the prophet is my own miracle. He might not be yours. He's my own, my personal miracle. It might not even be the case for everyone around me, but this is a father that is beneficial to me. And remember, it's the same thing when you are looking for a wife. Sometimes ministers make the mistake of looking for a wife who is good for their ministry and not good for them as a minister. When I was searching for a spiritual father. I was looking for somebody that is good for me, me, not you. So if you don't like the fruit I produce, it's unfortunate, but we are doing everything to preach the gospel.